Let's go. Sunderland stepped into the chaos engine of Hull City on Sunday, looking for a win to send them back to the top of the table. And we were playing for our first bit of silverware, the Raish Carter Trophy, which is only contested in the game between these two sides, played at Hull. Now, Hull haven't beaten Sunderland home for 10 years, and they made us feel even more welcome with a rousing rendition of Can't Help Falling in Love just before kickoff. Again, around here after difficult times under the previous ownership. Hull City are an unpredictable beast at the minute. New manager and sniper elite Tim Walters is no patsy. He arrived off the back of a combined five years managing Stuttgart and Hamburg with a 50% win rate. That is a staggering achievement. And until the pasting from Norwich City last outing, they were looking dangerous, having collected 14 goals in their previous five games. That's nearly three goals a game. However... Sunderland have one of the meanest defences in the league and are also the divisional top scorers. And it was perhaps that last fact that was most worrisome for Hull City, given they have kept the fewest clean sheets in the division. Just one. So buckle up as we find out what happened and why. Thank you to those of you who chose to support me on Patreon. For just £2 a month, you can keep me in coffee and up editing. And watch all of my videos with no adverts. Details in the description. Regis kept faith with the same team that has started the last four games. Aaron Connolly again made the bench with expectations today that he would make his debut at some point. Currently above them in the table, this a hugely significant test for Hull City. Volta plays an astonishingly high back line almost all the time. His tactics are not so much revolutionary, but more banzai, with the backline often halfway inside the opponent's half. This leaves them vulnerable to a ball over the top, and was precisely how Volta took a pasting from Norwich. Calls for Kate Gordon. Norwich fans would like to see him carried up the pitch here, but he keeps it, plays it in field, and slides an intelligent pass out to the left, and Sykes. Counter-attack on for Norwich. Sykes spots Nunez. Up towards the edge of the penalty, it goes Nunez. Reverse pass to Josh Sargent. Oh, it's blocked. He's still going in the penalty area, though. Eventually, Hull taking control of it, but Gordon wins it back. Deflected in! What we got today was a surprise in some respect. Hull City chose to sit compact and disciplined in defence, with five at the back sometimes, and a sitter in front of this line. Clearly, Volta PPK was keen to avoid another hammering against the division's top scorers. And largely, this worked for Hull. Sunderland wingers Mundell and Roberts were ignored out wide, and they simply defended the centre, much as we do. And Sunderland struggled to find a way through as a result. Who, uh, takes the game of risk to uh, worry. Hull? decided that they were going to play us on the break, and when they did, they piled men forward in their usual fashion, putting all ten comfortably into our half. It's Kamara. This was much more what we had planned for, and the plan was to try and release Isidore against that last man. The last man standing there was Charlie Hughes, and he had to get it right. This was largely the story of the first half. Again, from a Sunderland corner here, we see Hull break at pace. It was coming his way again. It's actually a foul on Dan Neal here. He's clearly pushed trying to head the ball, but the ref lets it go and Hull are away. Neal is unlucky with the block, but Hull aren't finished cheating yet. And now Balumi. Through the challenge of Hume. Well, a shout in the middle. So sure that... There's this ridiculous dive in the box from Marvin Mellon. That's feeble play. I want to see the ref drag him to his feet and slap him for that. Sunderland continued to see a lot of the ball and probed for an opening, but it was going to take something special to find one, and Chris Rigg almost provided it. Well played by Rigg and Hume! I wonder what it feels like as a professional footballer to be nutmegged on television by a 17-year-old. Have a bit of that through the legs, cheeky nutmeg. And you can see Isidore here again pressing the last man for Hull. When he retreats, Isidore presses again. He wants that one-on-one. -on -one. 
for a couple of goals to his name. Hull City like to try and create numerical advantages when they play out from the back. Their tactic is to use the goalkeeper as an additional outfield player to play past the initial press of two or three forwards. The idea is for the centre-back to run up, pulling their marker out of position, whilst at the same time the full-back drops inside and now has time and space to run upfield inside the centre-back. Or it has opened up a long passing lane to the opposite winger. That number nine that Sunderland have been looking for. for a... Sunderland, however, took the highly unusual step of employing four players in the attacking press, and it means that there are a lot of chances to cut off those passes. Hull then had to largely play it long, or else the goalkeeper has to come upfield with the ball. Effectively, Sunderland were closing off options and inviting Pandor to do that. Now, if you are the goalkeeper, how far away from goal, with no one to pass to, are you prepared to go? Turns out Ivor Pandor isn't prepared to go very far, and this tactic often forced Hull City to kick long, where we duly pick up the ball. Again, here. Come on, Pandor son. Be brave. Look at Sunderland here, marking up five on the front foot, and Hull had denied the option to play out. And so it went. Sunderland continued to dominate and fashion half chances. And Sirkin... Oh, got there quickly. Drame was desperate to do so. And Hull defended with disciplined resilience, and when they got the chance, they counter-attacked. To unleash the left foot. This is Rig. There's Gustavo Puerta. Up to Bedia, who has seen little of it, but he's done really well. Kamara here caught in two minds about whether to pass or to take on the shot, and in the end, he does neither. Well, that an opportunity missed. Big opportunity. Meffen was outstanding again today. His experience meant he knew just where to stand. Here he knows straight away that Luke Nine is going to be beaten and he goes full tilt to save the situation. Battle lines drawn, but battle won by Chris Meffen. Again, here, great decision making breaks up the attack. His displays in the five games he's played for us so far have been magnificent and demonstrate the value of experience for this side. And briefly a wrestling match and Bedia is penalised. There was still no way through for Sunderland at the other end though. Hull sometimes dropping into a back five to keep us out. But they continue to look dangerous on the break. And Bedia can steal it. Bellumi. Bedier again, promise here. Balumi, that's useful. Oh. And here's that underlapping fullback move working for them. Solid formation and looks really, really. Just look at how the passing lanes have opened up for Drama now, and he surges into the space. And I know that Sunderland have had plenty of the ball. And instigate things, but they have been brilliant out of possession. Hope uh, left back becomes an inside right. There we go. Towards the end of the first half, the ref nearly joined in the Tigers' press, helping them out with yet another counter. What are you doing, man? The referee's press is certainly working. Can you imagine if they score off that. Luke 9 broke up another counter moments later and Job goes very close to opening the scores. ...to do, afford him that kind of opportunity. Not in them areas. I've seen what he can do from that distance. Job Bellingham, I thought he just got in the way. <laughs> in the last seconds of the half, a speculative punt upfield from Hull put Puerta through on goal, but Chris Meffen was there to punch the ball away. Tim Valter certainly saying that as well. I think they're convinced, aren't they? That is a handball and red card. Where Eagles Dare looked absolutely furious at this being missed. A free kick in a very promising position. As, uh, Chris Regis, meanwhile, was planning improvements. A tactical cat and mouse first half, last minute excitement aside, the Tigers were actually toothless. They had zero corners to Sunderland's four and had mustered only one shot to Sunderland's seven in all of the first half. I can't even remember that one shot, can you? And having watched the game a few times now, I can't for the life of me find that one shot either. Oh, surprised that the 
still top scorers in the division have not managed to find a way through just yet. But we didn't have to wait long for Pato's first save. The Tigers came out for the second half with much more purpose. And, uh, Patterson. Although it turns out that this is Luko 9 trying to score again. Urgency. Ooh, it's the first time it's really been called upon, isn't it? <laughs> Minutes later, Balumi takes a shot, and I think that is Hull City's first shot at goal, although it is some way from goal. In that company, Balumi under pressure. Oh! He shakes his head. But this was followed up by Badia thundering this strike off the angle. Badia works the space. And Pato is nowhere near that. Hull were pressing now and winning their first corner as well. And Metham hasn't completely attended to the situation. Hull City invariably takes short corners, looking for shots on goal from the edge of the box. But unlike when we played like this, Hull have all 10 men on the 18 yard box or higher. Sunderland line up specifically to attack this. Strange, I know, but Hull have conceded lots of goals on the counter, so Regis has three men placed to deter the short corner receivers. The plan is then to attack these two players on the edge of the box before they can get a shot off, or at least be close enough to benefit from the ricochet, because there's no one behind them, just the goalkeeper to beat if you succeed. And look at Job, Isidore and Neil trying to rush this. But nothing comes of it. It's always a learning curve, isn't it? What you Sunderland tried lots of rotations to work an overload and find one out on the left. Look here how Rig and Roberts are inverted, and on the other side, so are Mundell and Job. Sunderland seem to do this from time to time in games to try and confuse the opposition. The structure is essentially the same, but the moving pieces sometimes make space for us. Think the first goal against Portsmouth and the first goal against Leeds. Both products of rotations making space that led to those goals. And Luko 9 advancing into space has helped create an overload here, which does result in the chance. Achievements. This is Mundell. Roberts. Combination that nearly worked. Roberts, though, fleet of foot. And Simons, the key man in the way. Dennis Serkin was again outstanding today. Here he manages two players knowing exactly when to leave his man and put in the tackle on Bidia. Sirkin made seven tackles today, more than any other player on the pitch, and he won 100% of them. He made two interceptions and was never dispossessed. He is a tremendous asset for us, but he was almost unlucky in his defending this counter from Hull. Key roll, real big roll he's playing there. But Hull could open them up here, Sirkin has to get it right! In the end, it is determination to win it. He does enough, though. And from the ensuing corner, watch the set and pressing players. And the rest is poetry. A massive save from Patterson. Well, Malin was being tightly marked there by the referee. And now the counter's on. And referee Madley has played his part in this. Is it all leading the Sunderland charge? Beautiful finish. Now tell me again, this man's not a forward. But uproar at the MKM Stadium! The pace displayed by Isidore in this goal will not have been a surprise if you saw his debut at Portsmouth. You have seen him ghost Pompey forward Kiseni Yengi to retrieve possession, and it was much the same seeing him glide past Hughes on his way to a perfect dink over the collapsing keeper. He's cheeky. <laughs> but the wild geese was unhappy and made several substitutions. Did the referee get in the way? No more than he did for Dan Neal in the first half. It's actually the whole player who runs behind him. But whatever, Wilson still has 80 metres to run here, so you can't very well blame all of that on the referee. He's everything he can, but this is truly brilliant. Brilliant! And Hull's sense of injustice was heightened when the referee again got in way of the play. Only this time, he gives a drop ball to Neil. Good lad, Madley Mackham. That's right. Oh, fans are furious, along with the coaching staff. The game looks stretched now as Hull press for an equaliser, but Mepham was there again for Sunderland. When Miller was saying, well, what about me? Regis now decided to give Connolly his debut. Replacing the knackered Isidore. 
Well, it's a... I'll try their short corner routine again, but this time the set contains them and all they can master is a difficult header. And at the other end, Romain Mundell went clear, and the cross finds Rig, who hits a half volley just inches wide. Oh, and a teaser, and there's Rig! And I think when it falls to the boy in form, I'm thinking that's gold band, it's side netting, but. Brown came on for Roberts and went into the centre with Job shoring things up, as Hull had been increasingly driving through that midfield since the goal. Rig moving out to the right. And a desperate eagle has landed, took off a centre-half and threw on his last subs to play two up front. That's half the team he's replaced since the goal. But it was Sunderland who were working chances now. Rig nutmegged Cody Drama for the second time today, but gets nothing for this. Rig. And as extra time loomed, Dan Neal dropped into the back line to make a back five. And Luke O'Nine blocked a shot. Miller. Bedia. Coyle thinks about the hit. Metham also heading cross clear. Searching cross. Joao Pedro, they really ganged up on him there. But it is a corner. Yeah, big moment. Big, big moment. And the sight of Hull's goalkeeper up for the subsequent corner heralded the end of the game. It is beyond him, but not João Pedro. Oh, I was there, as they say. And that was it. 1-0 Sunderland. Back to the top of the table. And to say the least, it's come as a result of one of the most extraordinary goals we'll see this season. Hull City are a decent side and one that looked to be getting better. I'm glad we played them now in a couple of games time. They're going to be bidding a lot of teams in this division. Who knows, they might even help us out in that. I've no time to cover the Luton game, but fingers crossed for that. And I'll see you next time. Side, but 